Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about how to convert an ISO 8601 date time value to an actual date time value that Microsoft Access can work with. I'll show you how to split it apart, get the date, get the time, and then we'll talk about that little time zone bit of information at the end over there. Today's question comes from Kenneth in Yantis, Texas, one of my expert students. Kenneth says, I import Amazon Kindle data to get a list of books that I have. The fields for dates come in with all those numbers and such that are never needed. Is there a way of formatting that data to just show the proper date? Well, Kenneth, all those other numbers, you got the date over here, right? Then the T stands for there's your time. And then the stuff on the end over here is your time zone information. So for example, this 0000 indicates it's UTC, Universal Time, otherwise known as Greenwich Time. And if you were in, let's say, Eastern Standard Time, this would be minus 0500 for minus five hours behind UTC. So in order to convert this into a daytime that Access can work with, we're going to use some different functions. Let's talk about the prerequisites for today's video. First up, since Kenneth is an expert student, we're gonna keep this at the expert level today, which means there's no VBA required. Now, if you're not familiar with ISO dates, I'm on a mission to convert the whole world over to the ISO date format. It's the only one that makes sense around the world, right? Year, month, day, okay? Um, so watch this video if you wanna learn more about that. Watch this video to learn more about ISO dates specifically in Access. I also have one for Excel too, if you wanna watch that. Now, all my other videos so far have focused on just dates, but ISO also specifies some different time formats too, and we'll talk about that in today's class. You're also going to need to know how to make calculated fields and queries, how to use the different string functions like left, mid, right, and those things. We're going to use date serial. That's where you can take a bunch of the components of a date, like the year, the month, and the day, and put them together into an actual valid access date. We're gonna use date add when we get down to the time zone stuff so we can add or subtract time to the date. We're gonna use type conversion functions just to see long today to convert a string to a long integer for a number. And I know there's a lot, this is the last one, the if function, the immediate if, which is basically an if then statement inside of a function. All right, and there might be more as we go along, I'm not sure, this is the ones I just wrote down. Um, so if you haven't watched any of these other videos, go watch those first and then come on back, we'll wait for you. All right, so when it comes to dates, it's pretty unanimous that the date format is YYYY-MM-DD, or you might see it without any separators, without any dashes. Like usually if, uh, you know, if, if you're uh, time stamping a file, you might name the file without dashes in it. But generally, the date is pretty uniform. The time, however, I've seen come in a variety of ways. So I asked ChatGPT, I'm like, is there an official standard? Basically, not really. Um, you got all these different official standards out here. Sometimes you'll have a T in there to, to differentiate the date from the time. Sometimes you won't. Sometimes there'll just be a space there. In any event, there's always something there, okay? Um, you might have a Z on the end, which stands for Zulu time, all right? Zulu is basically another word for UTC or Greenwich Mean Time, okay? Sometimes you'll have plus and then a time like that for the time zone. Sometimes it'll just be four digits, which is what Kenneth got. And there's other different variations down here. Basically, this is going to be a lesson in just, you have to deal with what they give you. Usually when you're doing an import, like if you look at Kenneth's data here, it's all uniform. So you just gotta look at these rules and know how to deal with it, okay? And this might be different between different data sources that you work with. I wish there was one just standard format that everyone used, but unfortunately when it comes to the time part, there isn't. All right, so let's start out by setting up a table to store this data. So table design, I'll just call it an ID field, and then we'll make um, ISO date time our field. Now, it's going to be a text field as it comes in. All right, in order to import this as it is from your data source with that T in there, you're going to have to import it as text, then we'll convert it. And I'm just going to do the conversion in a query. If you want, you can then take that data and then write it back into the table as a date time value. Maybe we'll do that later. I don't know if I, if I feel like it. 
But let's just save this as my ISOT. All right, primary key, sure. And now let's get some data. Now I'm gonna get the data that Kenneth has. And I'm just gonna copy and paste it from here in the OCR. I'm gonna use my screen capture tool. I like to use HyperSnap. I'm gonna grab this text right here, just like that. Snip it to my clipboard. I'm gonna go to the Google machine and click on this little thing here, the search by image, and then paste in what you just copied. And look at that. Come down to the bottom here, hit text, and then select all text. All right, now that should be in the clipboard after you hit copy. <laughs> Gotta copy it. And now I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna highlight this column because all I have is a column of these, right? And then paste it, boom, and there you go. There's all your data. See that? That's the that's the key. I showed this in another video too. And if it's two fields, you can select them like that. If you got like first name and last name, if they're tab delimited. All right. So now I got all that data that Kenneth had right in my table. All right, in a text field. Now we're going to do some work with a query. So we'll save that. Actually, this part helps if you can see the data that you're working. So we're just going to leave that open. Okay. Um, create query design. And let's resize this just a little bit, just so I can see some of that. Okay. Let's bring in that ISOT. There it is. And bring in the ID and the ISO date time. And this doesn't have to be together. So, uh, all right. Anyways, down here is where we're going to start taking apart this date. We're going to start with the year. Now, the year is the left four digits. So I'm going to call it YR is the name of my field and that's going to be the uh, left of you know what I don't want to have to type an ISO date time every time so let's alias this guy all right instead of ISO date time we're just going to call it D for date all right that's called an alias that's how I can now say if I run this now that guy's called D see that so now in all my other formulas I can refer to it as just D all right that makes more, much more sense all right so here we're going to say YR and I'm, I'm making them two digits because you got month and minute and all. Just, just, just bear with me. All right, so this is going to be the left of D comma four. That's how you get the year out. So now you run it. There's your year. Okay, makes sense. All right, the month, M-O. Now we got to use the mid function. We got to go in six and across two. So there's four, five, six is right there. Okay. So it's going to be the mid of D comma six comma two. And the same thing with the day is going to be the mid of D comma eight comma two. You just got to go across eight and get two characters. And then when you run it, there we go. Year, month, day. All right. We're cooking with gas now. Now, if all you want is the date, like Kenneth, if, you're, if you don't care about that time, you just want the date that the record is from, then, oh, wait a minute. I got, I'm wrong here, aren't we? Or what do we do? What do we do? Well, that should be nine, right? Yeah, it's nine. My bad, my bad. Check your data, folks, when you're doing it, right? Six. Forgot about that dash in there. There we go. That looks a lot better, right? Notice I was getting the dash because I, I did eight, which is that. Okay? All right. Check it each step of the way. Now, if all you want is just the date, you could put it together now. You could put these three things together using date serial, right? Date serial is how we build a date from the components. So right here. Let's call it new date. That's going to be date serial. And what is it? YR comma MO comma DA. And access will convert those from strings to numbers for you. And boom, there you go. And you can tell it's a date value because it lines up on the right side of the cell. See that? And the little date picker pops up. Okay. But we want to continue this. We want to get the time and then work with that time zone information as well. Right? I want to use all of this thing. And we'll do more in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. And if you remember, you can watch it right now because I'm going to keep recording and you'll have it in just a few minutes. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free.
Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover 
lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just Access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.